that this, this is my refrigerator is because I have a lot of um, things that you stick on refrigerators. Magnets. Magnets. And they're from all the places that I've been. And in taking that picture, that right side is full. But it lets me realize that I will never feel the left side. Realize that we're people too. We have feelings. It's hard, you know. Have compassion, because compassion is not shown very often. You know, help us to be game oriented. We don't want to be burdens on society. We want to be able to do things just like everybody else. Give us our dignity, our respect. Part of it is called photo voice. Um, I'm doing photo voice with the Vision Resource Center and it's actually a research project. So what we're doing is um, we're taking photographs to try and understand our research question, which is what is it like to be blind or have low vision in Cumberland County? It's a participatory research project and it has a goal of empowerment. Um, so we're supposed to use the photos to build people's confidence that they can share a story about their own situation with policymakers and other people that can potentially make change. A right to work and educating the public. Yes. Yes. We ignore it as human beings. Mm -hmm. but we also need to realize we can do things as much as anybody else. Yeah, because we just want to give the opportunity to try. But what people need to realize is that we are still human and that we need to be as independent as we can be. We have the same rights that they do. Yeah, but they exactly. don't look at it like that. The fact that the participants are blind or low vision doesn't necessarily have to stop them from being able to convey what they want to convey through an image as a media. Um, and they also know that they can use their cameras um, in terms of symbols and metaphors to, to take things representing something else. It's just really up to them, but the image itself is a very powerful media for people that are sighted. And a lot of the policymakers that can potentially make change are sighted. And then for your CCTV yeah. that you just received, how would you yeah. like to yeah. caption that and categorize it? Um, One word for the category. Could you um, take pictures? Yeah. Yeah. Technology, yeah. technology devices? Sure, technology devices is a great category. The neat thing about this picture that Stevie took is that during yoga on Tuesday, we were talking about bodies and stuff, and all of a sudden he started talking about how he has difficulty shaving. Stevie has a glaucoma, he was diagnosed in 2010, and he has some vision, it's limited, and um, he has problems shaving because basically he can't see his face very well. Uh, I took a picture of my magnifying mirror because I can't see to shave good, I miss spots. This picture here is my magnifier TV glasses. I can't see the TV. I need a magnifier glasses to help me see the TV and adjust it for people who are legally blind. Okay. Now, Toyota is putting out one, and I forgot the other company, but it's an American company that's putting out a car for the blind. But when they get them on the road, we probably can't afford them. They make it so high. They make everything we get. Everything that we need that makes life more comfortable. More normal. Yes. It costs a little bit more. Yes. That's one big thing that I cannot understand. Everybody, I'm not rich. I stay in a nice neighborhood, but I'm not rich. And some, just a lot of your basic things are just so expensive, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Out of reach for a blind person. Uh, CCTV, which 
is something that helps you read by connecting to your TV. Yeah. Starts at fifteen hundred dollars. Oh wow. Um, is something that I spoke about briefly already, but this idea that um, science technology, even if it's built for the blind, it's too expensive. So today Vicki brought up the important point that I've discovered along with my research that blindness is an epidemic. And they need to stop and realize that it's more blind people coming. Yeah. There's more out there. We need to be treated as if we had sight to it. Yeah. yeah. What do you mean there's more blind people coming? Blindness uh, is, is God giving mercy and the ear. Yeah. Uh, diabetes. Yeah. Different. Uh, uh, strokes. Strokes. Yeah. You know, people are living longer. Yes. And so, you know, well, according to the accidents that are causing it. Yeah. yeah. According to doctors, blindness is becoming an epidemic. Today we had the Photo Voice exhibit for the Photo Voice project that we were doing with the Mission Resource Center. And the exhibit itself was located at the Marquee Markers here in Fayetteville, North Carolina. I think that the most important thing that people should take away from the Photo Voice exhibit is that people with blindness and low vision are very much interested in being independent. But what they need from policymakers and from interested parties is encouragement and advocacy for technological tools and assistive devices that are um, more economical. Photos were displayed with photo narratives, which means that we either use quotes or paraphrases of what participants had said about their photos, and we incorporated that into the display of the photos while the participants were doing the photography project, we had a videographer come and actually document what they were doing. And um, the open letter's purpose is to take some of the um, policy recommendations that were articulated by the participants from the Vision Resource Center and put them in a format that is uh, easily digestible uh, for policymakers to potentially incorporate into their state planning efforts for the upcoming year.